I mean, your question about why low carb is so popular, it seems yes. to me, is pretty easy. People okay. are very, very worried about their weight. And if you don't eat a lot of carbs, you don't eat a lot of calories, and you can control your weight better. Um, I don't think it's any more complicated than that. What is complicated and what's very difficult to explain is why it's become a cult. Um, and why people are so emotionally attached to that idea and so angry and infuriated if anybody says anything different or argues with them. And it's the level of emotion that goes into people's dietary beliefs that I find puzzling, although I, I you know, have some sense of what it's about. First of all, they're furious at nutritionists for giving information that is turning out to be con conflicted or confusing or not settled. Um, they don't see science as something that evolves where we know some things at one point in time and other things at other point in time, and that changes advice. They're tired of hearing the advice and the idea that it changes, and they are absolutely buy-in to the argument that this is nanny statism and people are telling them what to do, and the libertarian arguments about how you don't want the government involved in your dietary choices, particularly if the government makes mistakes which the government does on occasion. When I look at dietary advice, I don't see any changes. I don't see any changes dating back to Ansel Keys, who said, eat a plant-based diet, largely, eat meat and dairy in smaller am amounts, don't eat too much junk food, and maintain a reasonable body weight. That's still the advice. If you cut through all the jargon and cut through all the verbiage, that's still what everybody is saying. That hasn't changed. And the evidence for that gets stronger all the time. Uh, most people that I've met who work for food companies believe that they're providing food to feed a hungry world and a hun hungry population. And they truly believe that it's up to individuals to make their own choices about what they eat. We produce food. Um, we think the product that we're producing is of high quality. It's not making people die on the spot. Um, you know, we're not directly poisoning anyone. And foods that seem not so good for you if you ate a lot of them uh, are fun to eat and once in a while is okay. And we're not holding a gun up to anybody's head and forcing you to eat our products. It's up to you. It's up to personal choice. Occasionally, Someone will surface, as a couple of people who worked for Coca-Cola did in the last few years, and these executives of Coca-Cola describe themselves as having a karmic debt to pay, uh, that they owed the world a debt for having marketed their products to vulnerable children, and they could see that a sugary drink, which is sugar, is water, and nothing else, uh, would be something that wouldn't be good for children. You wouldn't let your child eat candy all day long. Uh, but somehow, if the candy comes in liquid form, it doesn't seem so bad, and they feel really bad about what they did and um, you know, are regretting it and are trying to make up for it by the work that they're doing now. Um, they're rare. You don't hear that very often. Mostly what you hear is st a steady industry litany that comes right out of the tobacco industry playbook, which is, it's your fault if you're fat. It's your choice. If your kids are sick or fat, you're the parent. You need to make the decision. You don't want the government involved. And then behind the scenes, doing all of this lobbying work to make sure that the government doesn't set any regulations on industry that would, st that would regulate, for example, the size of a soda or the ability of companies to market to children. Well, I'm sure that people can argue about what the responsibilities of government are. And throughout the history of the United States, we've had those kinds of arguments. But there are precedents for the government getting involved in public health. We're required to wear seat belts. And we're required to wear seat belts not only to protect the driver and the driver's passenger, but also to protect the society as a whole from the health care costs and the costs of having to treat the people who survive automobile accidents and are damaged for life. It is considered a civic 
virtue and a, a civic responsibility of government to protect people's, the lives of citizens. So that's one example. Fluoridated water is another public health example. Vaccination is another. Now some of these are more controversial than others and individuals have different views of it. But we now have a fair amount of evidence that regulations of the food supply can help people eat healthier diets. Uh, we have menu labeling coming in. We have labels on food products. We have standards on nutrition in schools. And we have some voluntary standards on marketing to children, although those are widely ignored, I would say. Um, and in fact, the voluntary standards are so widely ignored that that's why lots of people think we have to have mandatory standards to protect citizens against uh, the focused financial interests of corporations. You know, it's the job of corporations to sell more, not less. And I think the real problem that underlies corporate behavior, if there's a way to talk about corporate behavior, is that it's not that corporations have to make a profit. That's not enough. They have to grow their profits every 90 days. And for food companies, that's especially difficult because we have far too much food in this country for the needs of the population. We have an enormous overabundance of food, and that does two things. It makes a lot of it wasted, which a lot of people are really concerned about. And it makes food corporations especially competitive to try to sell their products so you eat what they make instead of what somebody else makes. I think the problem is complicated. Food isn't cigarettes. Cigarettes are not essential to life. Um, and they have one message, stop smoking. If you ask an anti-smoking advocate, what do you really want? What's your ultimate goal? The ultimate goal is to put the industry out of business. I mean, if really, that's what they'd like to do. With food, it's much more complicated. You have to eat to live. So it isn't a question of stop eating. That's not appropriate. It's eat this instead of that, or eat less in general, um, or other kinds of equally complicated messages. So that's hard. And then anything other than alcohol or soft drinks have some nutrients in them. So they're not simple products. Alcohol is alcohol, soft drinks are sugars and water and nothing else. They're the easy ones. And if you look at what's happening with the soda industry, there's enormous advocacy to get people to stop drinking sodas. And that advocacy has been so successful that soda consumption is down by 30, 20 to 30% in the United States. And the industry is scrambling to try, to try to stay above water and doing what the cigarette industry did when cigarette smoking went down and moving it all overseas. We can talk about advocacy around what has to happen in developing countries to try to resist the sales of soft drinks there because you know that obesity is sure to follow. Um, but in this country, advocacy has been enormously successful in that particular area. Anything other than soft drinks is hard. You know, fast food, there, fast food has nutrients. It just doesn't have an enormous number of nutrients for the number of calories that you get. But it's got nutritional value. And in fact, practically anything has nutritional value in it except for soft drinks. Uh, one of the reasons why, and the only reason that soft drinks don't have vitamins added is because the FDA has taken a very strong position on that, another area where government regulation has been useful. So it's more complicated, and there's no really simple answer to that, and that's why I think that advocacy is so important. And I'm so impressed with the way the food movement is pushing um, back on corporations, and there's more and more coming out about corporate stepping over the line. There's a new film called Merchants of Doubt, which is mostly about tobacco and climate change denying and the toxic chemicals industries, but food fits right in there because it's about the playbook and the casting doubt on the science. And if you look at what the food industry is doing, that's exactly what it's doing, is trying to cast doubt on the science that links um, diet to poor health. And they've been pretty successful at it.